So without wasting time, I want to call upon uh, Dr. Sudha Ranganathan, ma'am. She heads the uh, Apollo Jubilee Hills Blood Bank, one of the very, very dynamic uh, uh, lady to work with. Uh, we work together in the same organization and the, 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 the funder is, uh, they, she's on her way to go to another hospital to receive the award. Uh, for the wonderful standards we maintain in Apollo. It's, it's all about work, teamwork and, and to take all our work to the next level is what we have planned this uh, meeting of ours today. Uh, we will be requesting everybody to uh, join with their full you know, uh, involvement and, and ask questions. Let your questions be silly enough, but your silly, and, uh, silly questions will be helping us out in giving best which will help out clearing doubt for somebody else or the other. Uh, Dr. Sudha, are, are you ready to help us out in knowing the, the, the do's and don'ts during the blood uh, donation and who all are eligible to give the blood and who should not give the blood? Over to one and only Dr. Sudha Ranganathan, ma'am. But before she speaks, um, has Dr. Garima done the needful of introducing ma'am? No, ma no, sir, yet, not yet. Can you inform, uh, introduce yeah. the speaker to all of us? Yes. So Dr. Sudha, she is a consultant and head of transfusion medicine Apollo Hospitals. She has an experience of over 20 years and she has uh, international and international publications to her kitty. And her areas of interest are emergency therapeutic uh, appraises, clinical transfusion practice, pediatric transfusion, antenatal and prenatal immunohematology. I welcome you, ma'am. Or the stage is yours. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ashish and uh, your team for giving me this opportunity. Uh, yeah, it is so nice that uh, the world is celebrating uh, today as World Blood Donor Day. I would like to make a comment. Two, three years ago, we nobody knew that this day uh, was even celebrated, but now there is a lot of awareness <laughs> about this June 14th, and I'm very glad that uh, I am allowed to speak in this platform. So you asked me a very important question that is important for the public too, to know about the do's and don'ts of uh, blood donation. See, we come uh, under the Ministry of Health. So we are gov governed by certain rules and regulations for our India. So the rules will be different in different countries. 90% of them will almost be the same. So age is one criteria. Anybody who's above 18 can, can donate up until the age of 60. Recently, uh, it has been modified as 65. Then anybody who weighs more than 45 kgs, who has a hemoglobin of more than 12.5 grams, can uh, donate blood. And there is a medical history which we would be asking, like malaria, jaundice, particular, you know, focusing on transfusion transmitted illnesses, hepatitis, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV infection. All these are very important uh, history from the donor we ask. Anybody who's uh, having any fever, uh, now we had the COVID crisis, so they, they, they couldn't donate blood for 28 days. So uh, there is a set of criteria which uh, we look into for eligibility or eligibility for donating blood. So anybody, you know, who's a hypertensive, if, his, uh, if he's on medication and if he has a normal blood pressure on that particular don uh, you know, donation time, we take them for, uh, uh, you know, blood donation. Anybody who's a diabetic also can donate if he is on oral uh, hypoglycem uh, hypoglycemic agents, anti-diabetic drugs. If somebody is on insulin, they cannot uh, donate blood. So these are the very common, uh, you know, eligibility criteria. So if anything is there, I can answer. I think I'll request uh, the surgeon to come into the scene. We have a Dr. Reginald out here. How important is the blood donation and uh, what are things uh, our panelists and the other friends should know about it? I am very much amazed that we just finished a discussion on All India Radio where we were had the blessed presence of Gurpal Singh Ji, who has donated 143 times his blood, total amounting to 61 plus lit, uh, liters of blood he's given. So that is an encouraging. Reginald, over to you. Before I request Dr. Vijay Kumar, who is a, a chairperson to come into the scene, 
But before Rajinal speaks, a uh, small intro of his by uh, Dr. Garima, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are happy to have Dr. Rajinal with us. He has 26 six years of experience in medical uh, science and he has practiced as journal and laparoscopy surgery for more than 14 years. He's been, UK, he's been to UK and France to upgrade his skills and finally uh, a super specialized into plastic surgery. Presently, he's working full time at Satya Veda Medical Center. Uh, welcome you, sir. Thank you, Garima. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, I hope I'm audible, right? Am I? Yes, sir, you are. Yeah. yeah. Blood, uh, blood donation is, uh, as a surgeon, you know, it is, uh, we have come across so many times of need of blood before we do surgeries. There are many a times of the patient who has a lower hemoglobin and, the, and our analysis says, no, we are not in a position to give the analysis to them. Then we have to rush and get the uh, blood donation done. And there are also many surgical uh, complications or uh, diseases where we treat, where there's lots of uh, blood loss, maybe because of trauma or maybe because of, because of, because of certain cut lacerations or certain wounds or maybe some hemopyrton, that, that means the blood is leaking inside because of some perforation in the intestine. Uh, you know, that's all where uh, the, a place where somebody who has donated blood has saved the lives of many people. So this is very vital and very important as far as we are concerned as surgeons. Always before we do any surgery, we always check for the blood and whether they are fit for surgery or not. And if needed, a blood transfusion is, all, is mandatory. Uh, that is how it is. So donating blood saves lives. Donating blood, actually, I think um, Ashish and Madam will be able to tell you what are the different types of donations which are can be done, what are the different uh, um, components of blood donation and how often we can do uh, blood donation. But yes, as a surgeon, I can tell you one thing for sure. Somebody who's donating blood is saving lives for 110%. The blood is life. Blood is equivalent to life. This is what I always push into everybody. Uh, anything particularly about surgical side, maybe I can further enlighten as we, we continue our uh, discussion. Uh, let me stay put now. Right, Ashish? Uh, thanks a lot, Raji. That was a very nice uh, input from your side. Um, I would want to check upon if Dr. Vijay Kumar sir is with us. Uh, would you want to introduce uh, Dr. Hagarima or you want me to do the honors? I would definitely like you to do the honors. Okay, I'm really delighted. Dr. Vijay sir, are you there? I'm very much uh, delighted yes, sir, he's to, there. Have, to have the blessed presence of uh, Dr. Vijay uh, Kumar sir, an IAS officer from uh, uh, Andhra Telangana. He's been here for a couple of decades now. He hails from Delhi and uh, currently he's taken over as a chairperson for the uh, uh, advisory committee for Telangana State Red Cross Society. We are really, really blessed to have your presence out here. Dr. Vijay Kumar, sir, as an administrative head who has been in the, you know, uh, worked with so many public, uh, you know, platforms, what is your input and what is your ideas about the blood donation on this very World Blood Donation Day today? Dr. Vijay, sir. Uh, thanks, Ashish, for such uh, nice words that you have spoken about me. Is everybody there? Yes, sir. We are here and we can hear you. Yeah. My, see, technically, all of you are, I think, probably much more informed uh, about the whole concept of blood uh, donation uh, compared to me. Of course, I am basically a trained doctor, but I left uh, medicine long back when I joined into civil services. But I have one very important, you know, concern about uh, this whole concept of uh, uh, blood uh, transfusion and blood donation. My small suggestion is that uh, the society as such should take up a campaign to incentivize, uh, you know, sort of blood donation. Blood donation is a pious social activity and it is cast upon the society to uh, maybe not fully reward it, but at least incentivize it. Uh, 
uh, what i mean is i'll uh, you know try to clarify it suppose somebody you know donates five units of blood in a span of say one year two years etc maybe the state by state i mean the country uh, should reward that person by say reduction in lifetime tax on motor vehicle motor vehicles or maybe some x percentage of reduction in property tax uh, or maybe some reduction in uh, payable income tax or maybe corporate tax something like that etc so that is what i think we should uh, uh, take up as a campaign that is going to actually accelerate the the you know blood uh, donation by the eligible people from the society which in turn is going to save lot of lives as uh, the the predecessor predecessor speaker told the surgeon that life is uh, blood is life because of course everybody knows before during and after the surgery lot of blood is required to sustain the life i think that is one thing which uh, we should take up as a campaign kumar sir i'm so delighted thanks dr vijay and especially the fact jo aapne bola hai i am touched ki this needs to be intensive you know incentivize is the right word um thoda sa khatra hum log ko yahi ho jata hai ki it's it's like a it, the commercial aspect we we need to be careful about it but i sincerely believe it but then we feel very delighted that you know i was talking to you about gurpal singh ji who was with us from lions club uh he being a part of tata motors uh, uh his company celebrates every time every 25 times he has donated the blood it's a big celebration which is made and uh, he gets uh, some gift and big recognition so yes i think today my take home message will be to incentivize any of my patient maybe even as little as anything which any one of us can do it is a free consultation to be offered say kind of uh, for lifetime for anybody who is donated blood more than 100 times stuff like this should be considered hats off to you uh, vijay sir because yes it has to come into the you know uh, i always believe though uh, probably i'll be unkind to you that the society is in the hands of the politician and bureaucrats so if they are in the right direction with the with the prayers of us all we will reach the new direction um we have one of the very very dynamic oh, ashish give me one minute sir See, you gave example of tata motors and the see incentivization or rewarding at a small micro level organizational level is not going to help the quote and quote society in general you have to you know expand it bring it to a very macro level at the national level etc if you have to you know if you have to accept it to be taken as a revolution kind of thing okay that is what i meant okay so you have put it in a right way rather today you are making me feel proud that it was a very very right to request you to join us in this discussion because none of the doctors in my panel can say these words so they do not understand the way you see a, a problem as well as uh, possibilities in the future i definitely believe that we are recording this session we would request other uh, uh, members of the society life is all about having the liberals talking openly and working for the society so you have really uh, you know open up uh, our eyes to the something which is needed because we always have the need and probably that's what dr ashita singh will be talking about it in later aspect the need is about vaccinating uh, the sickle cell children who are who are really really dying every other day working out to provide insulin free for type 1 diabetes mellitus in our country at this time i will first i will push a question to one of the very dynamic emergency physician among us dr ashima sharma agrawal she if i give all introduction then dr garima is not going to accept it so i will give the platform to dr garima to introduce one of the very vibrant me hamare sath is samay surju marandi sahab also jude hain jo ki hindi prarthna sabha ke ek foundation mein he does a fantastic uh, you know uh, um, uh, social work 
where he is taking care of transgenders during the time of lockdown. So we welcome all of you. Uh, but over to Dr. Garima to introduce Dr. Ashima Sharma Agrawal to all of us. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm very much delighted to introduce Dr. Ashima Sharma, who, with whom I've developed a small bond of friendship in just few months. So, Madam has studied MBBS from King George Medical University, Lucknow. She completed her MD Anesthesiology from uh, LLRM Medical College. She did her senior registrar post in MAMSI, Delhi and in the Department of Anesthesiology. And she's currently working at NIMS full-time. She's a professor and founding head of Department of Emergency Medicine at NIMS. We are very delighted to have you here, Madam. The stage is yours. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Ashish and everyone who is involved in this uh, today. In And I'm listening to all the wise words and I'm sure uh, I'll carry back all this and we will be able to um, inculcate them in our practice. Uh, as we the talk is today about sickle cell disease and uh, on this day of uh, blood donation, Donors Day. So... Uh, as emergency medicine person, I, we do get a lot of sickle cell patients coming to us, mostly for uh, the uh, difficult pains. So how do we manage them? And sometimes for their transfusion needs in the time of emergency. Uh, so these are the two kind of variety of patients which we receive in emergency department. So uh, um, most of the time we are very, very particular that if we are planning a transfusion for a sickle cell disease, we often do, uh, our target is never already that is said, but uh, just want to emphasize the target never goes beyond eight or nine. Uh, we often take a complete history. We want to know how how was the, but were, were there any delayed hemolytic reactions also? Were there any other reactions hap which happened during the, previous transfusion, everything is documented to be on a safer side. Uh, our uh, blood bank uh, transfusion medicine department and hematologist is involved for uh, before we go ahead and transfuse these patients uh, uh, as uh, as the uh, people who are dealing with that can tell that we have to be very careful to uh, choose the leuco uh, reduct, uh, reducted uh, RBCs and also the Kel C and D profiles have to be negative so that um, there is least possible chance of an of a reaction. Still, to be on a safer side, as emergency physicians, we often um, uh, pre-medicate these uh, patients with um, uh, with drugs like um, Avil. Um, and uh, sometimes we give a small dose of hydrocortisone, a 50 milligrams intravenous dose before giving uh, the blood transfusion. Um, we often uh, monitor them throughout the transfusion. And also we do um, give a small dose of um, fluzimide as well. If we need, if the, there are uh, uh, um, signs and symptoms of uh, fluid overload. This was about the transfusion, what we do um, and how we do for a sickle cell disease. And more often the children, they, uh, the patients, they come to us in vaso-occlusive crisis. What I mean by vaso-occlusive crisis is acute chest syndromes, which, are, which is very painful. And also some in hemolytic crisis, wherein there are leg ulcers or uh, severe pulmonary hypertensions. So uh, all these, uh, whenever there is a painful crisis, uh, we are uh, we we are um, uh, we use uh, narcotic. We do not worry about uh, the respiratory depression and all uh, part of narcotic. We make it uh, very very safe for the patient. We are all we always look back into their history. How did their pain relieve the la uh, how was the pain relieved the, in the last episode, similar episode? Most of them, they have four to five episodes in a year. Um, so they, the patients and their uh, uh, papers, which they come with are well, very well informed. And uh, we use uh, uh, a drug, which is known as fentanyl, which is very, very easily available nowadays as an opioid analgesic um, in small doses based on the weight of the patient. Uh, to relieve the pain crisis. That is what is very important. Um, my special case here would be a 
uh, would be my remembrance is a pregnant lady who come, came with sickling disease in severe painful crisis. And uh, I remember that at that point also, we did not worry about, um, uh, about all the negative uh, effects of uh, opioids. It is said that if a mother is distressed uh, and, it is, and the distress is relieved, so will the child it be, fetal it will be. So we went ahead. Apart from this uh, fluid hydration, good fluid hydration going to uh, somewhere like 100 to 120 uh, mils of fluid every hour is equally important in this, these cases. Uh, I'm ready if someone has some question. Or... That was a very great insight, uh, um, uh, Ashima. Always a delight to hear you, especially that we had that lovely discussion uh, uh, about um, sickle patient coming in crisis. Uh, I want to check it out if Sudha ma'am is available or not. The question is, how do we maintain the privacy? Uh, and in the meanwhile, also, I'll invite Dr. Ash, uh, Dr. Ashita Singh to talk about sickle cell disease, the epidemiology, how common is this? And what are the problems which a patient actually faces? Because for affluent part of the society, you and me, who do not have it, we don't even realize it. I don't remember when I saw the sickle disease last, more than a decade almost, because again, it goes to the specialist in Hyderabad. But then the people who are suffering through it, uh, uh, they go through a different kind of trauma. And uh, who else but Dr. Ashita Singh to, to tell us um, the pain as well as the, the pain of a patient and the doctor and the system. But before she speaks out, uh, over to Dr. Garima to, uh, to kind of uh, introduce Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Ashita Singh. She has done her MBBS from CMC Vellur, MD Medicine in CMC Lutyana. She did her MA in Bioethics from Trinity International University, Chicago, and has a fellowship in Infectious Disease and Palliative Medicines and experience in critical care at Vellur. She has worked in two EHA missions hospitals, seven years in Tejpur, Assam, and now she is in Chinchpara, Nandapur, Nandapur, Maharashtra, which is a remote tribal area for last seven years. Sorry, ma'am, if I didn't spell it correctly. I'm really sorry. Uh, Madam's husband, Dr. Deepak, is a pediatric surgeon, and she has two children, 17, Arnav, and 15, Tara, who are in boarding school. We are very delighted to have you here, ma'am. The stage is yours. Thank you, Garima. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are. Perfect. I think one more important piece of information is that <clears throat> uh, I am Ashish's classmate from MBBS days. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that because when Lord and Ludhiana. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, thanks a lot. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Ashima for that lovely summing up of sickle cell disease. It's really exhilarating to hear you know, someone talk with passion about management of uh, sickle cell disease. And as Ashi said, the scenario that we face in rural India is quite different in terms of uh, the whole experience of sickle cell disease. And uh, having been here for about nearly eight years now, uh, I actually had to learn about management of sickle cell disease from, from scratch because when I started getting patients when we came here eight years ago, it was uh, you know, absolutely new to me and I didn't have, uh, well, or doesn't see much sickle cell disease, nor do we see in many other places. So I've, I've uh, taught myself and learned on the job. But I think the, uh, the important things that I feel, you know, we are going to be celebrating World Sickle Cell Disease uh, on 18th of, I mean, 19th of June this year, as uh, we do every year. And I think it's very important for us as a community of uh, uh, medical professionals to be uh, advocates for this very important disease. Uh, <clears throat> it has a few unique things that make it hard for people with sickle cell disease. That is, it is very, uh, you know, geographically sort of uh, limited to uh, certain areas in our country and the people who suffer are even otherwise among the most disempowered people on the planet. And that is most of our people uh, from the tribal communities. So in Nandurbar district of Maharashtra, although it's from a state that has a lot to boast about, Nandurbar district as such uh, cannot share in that boasting. 70% of our people live below the poverty line. 
and about 30% of families are affected by this disease or the trait. And so the number of people we have who suffer from this disease is massive. And considering that, you know, the infrastructure and systems for their care, uh, we still haven't managed to reach the standards that even African countries have given to their people. So I think we have, uh, uh, we really have a long way to go. Two things, if we could do for them, ensure that they get hydroxyurea, which is the only drug that actually has mortality benefit that reduces the episodes of pain, that improves their average hemoglobin levels, that reduces the need for their transmissions. If I and can interrupt you, Ashita, uh, yes. uh, because obviously we wanted a discussion where people can talk it out. And, uh, and the hydroxyurea is not available free of cost. I think the not, uh -huh. not yet. It's not yet available in Maharashtra in, in many areas. Uh -huh. uh, in our district, it's not yet available in our district hospital. Mm -hmm. So if the district hospital, you know, uh, finds it difficult to provide it free of cost, mm -hmm. it's going to be difficult for the other primary health centers. And, you know, most of our people access government services because they're very poor. Yes. Um, and so it's imperative that this is made standard of care. Yeah. I, before you continue, Nandarbar is a place um, which was in limelight last year in around February, I think the only one place where the, the blessed bureaucrat had come forward and he had built up the first oxygen tank where the whole India was crying for oxygen. They were the ones who were not only had enough stock, but they were providing to the nearby district also. That's what I remember in the news. Is that true, Ashita? Mm, I'll, I mean, I know that there was a lot done by that district collector, Dr. Barood, who was really very charismatic and very forward looking. Uh -huh. uh, but yes, we still we still struggled for oxygen. Okay. Yes. Uh oh, OK, that's fine. Yes, over to you. Please continue. Sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Yeah, so I was talking about hydroxyurea. And the other thing which I think Ashish will tell us more about is vaccination. So on the upcoming sickle cell day, we are hoping to vaccinate all the people that we are actively following up, about 150 to 200 uh, children and uh, adults with sickle cell disease. Uh, vaccinate them with the uh, pneumococcal vaccine, the PCV13, which is, uh, you know, which is known to prevent and protect against pneumococcal infections and invasive pneumococcal infections, which are, uh, which are the most deadly. Of course, there are other capsulated organism infections, which also they must receive vaccine against, such as typhoid, H influenza B, and uh, uh, certain others. But for a start, we thought that let's give these people uh, the PCV13 vaccination. We've been trying to get them to get it for themselves, but you know, in an illiterate population that is living at subsistence level, uh, prevention is something that is uh, uh, that is an alien concept and really hard for them to uh, access. Yeah, and uh, in terms of, uh, I think it's it's a good thing that these two days come so close: Blood Donation Day and uh, Sickle Cell Day, World Sickle Cell Day. Um, I think for transfusion, because we have a lot of people who require frequent transfusions, our aim is to reduce their need for transfusion by giving them the appropriate preventive uh, treatment. And uh, to be aware that when we have a large number of patients who are receiving these transfusions because the, of the severe anemia, we've seen hemoglobins as low as one gram uh, who survive. <clears throat> uh, there are certain uh, side effects that are known to be linked with uh, sickle cell disease transfusion. So we about three people so far in my last in my seven years who who developed a posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome in response to transfusion and there's a link between that syndrome and sickle cell disease when they receive transfusion so that's just something interesting i thought i'd flag up thank you thanks a lot ashita for that wonderful insight into sickle cell yes uh, sickle cell disease is reasonably very common in our country and and yes, we need to do our part of it. I'm very much happy that we have a lot of members of Lions Club who are uh, who are participating today. We thank Ajit Nair sir and uh, even Chetna Bhatia ma'am and others to join because Lions, I'm the president for one of those chapters that is a uh, uh, charter president for Lions Club of Hyderabad Elite Doctors. Today we'll be getting a donation of an ECG machine. So uh, are these NGOs, they keep doing their part and whatever we can do it, it's good. Um, as I was sharing the idea that uh, um, Mr. Uh, Surju Marandi helped us out in giving uh, food to 150 
ट्रांसजेंडर्स फॉर वन मंथ कम्प्लीटली विच रियली मेक्स लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस तो भले ही हमको ये छोटी चीज लगे या बड़ी चीज लगे वी वी प्रोवाइड फूड ब्रेकफास्ट टू ऑलमोस्ट हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी पीपल फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट एवरी नाउ एंड देन विच विच मैटर्स अ लॉट I would want to tell you, Ashita, what you are doing, what Surju Marandi sir and others are doing. It may look and and always and always I get reminded and share that word of Mother Teresa. What you and me are doing is a drop in the ocean. But yes, ocean will be empty without that drop. So keep doing your good work. Uh, whatever there is a need for vaccinations, we will see if we can have some kind of crowd funding. I think there are hundred and fifty children who require that kind of help, Ashita. Yes, currently we have that many people who we are hoping to vaccinate. Of course, the need is much bigger, but we thought that if we are able to get these people across, then that will become a step forward, and we can continue to advocate for all children and adults with sickle cell disease to receive that. I think that's what we need to have it coming through the politicians and bureaucrats in the policy making. Tough call, but then definitely it's something which we look forward to it. Um, We are very much uh, uh, happy to take any questions, Ayer sir. Are you here to speak out something, or anybody else who would want to share any ideas from your side? Sir, I have a question. Yes, please, Dr. Ashish Nama. Ma'am, uh, uh, to my understanding, sickle cell disease does does cause hearing loss, and there are many children who have. So, uh, do do they get required help because you are in an area where there is very difficult. for people to reach and medical thing sorry uh, garima i haven't uh, i haven't come across a large number of people who have hearing loss I, i'm not sure if that's a known complication of sickle cell disease as such but we do have a lot of other complications such as sickle cell nephropathy it's very common for them to have avascular necrosis of their hip joints and sometimes even the shoulder joints so we have uh, about 13 to 15% of our uh, people have avascular necrosis uh, they also have yeah sickle cell nephropathy uh, okay. complications okay. from okay. chronic okay thank you ma'am thank you so we go back uh, one thing to communicate blood donation because today it's a blood donation day uh uh we have another very finest person also to talk about many things which related to the blood who else but a, a pediatric hemato oncologist is shrisha has a time enough to give us for 2 to 3 minutes to us yes there she is um uh, are you ready with the introduction because i wouldn't mind doing my part yes the, the way garima is 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 nodding i better not take her chance we have one of the very busiest one of the very finest and very very humble human being dr shirisha and dr lokesh lingappa both of them you know it's very tough to get their time for us to have them around us uh, over to garima to introduce shirisha before we have from our one of the leading pediatric hemato oncologist of twin states thank you sir thank you uh, i am very delighted to have dr shirisha rani with us today madam is a pediatric hematology and oncology as well as bone marrow transplantation but over 25 years of experience dr sirisha received her mbbs from university of health science in 1997 and her post graduate training from pgi chandigarh we are very delighted to have you here ma'am stage is yours thank you thank you very much uh, sorry i missed all the initial part because i was stuck with the work uh, so and i also noticed my name today rather so i couldn't adjust my work yesterday yesterday uh so i i'm sure you have a have... question shrisha before you get off guarded is how important is blood donation how often do you require it for your patients and uh, how much what is your word as as a, one of the very busy uh, a cancer specialist who handles the blood disorders and the blood cancers how much need is there for the blood to be donated and people to understand that so the need is very huge like you know in oncology uh, day in day out as well as in hematology at least in hematology periodically we need it like once in a month or so or at time once in 2 to 3 weeks but in oncology uh, blood product requirement can be very huge uh, in terms of uh, platelets and um, prbc plasma cryoprecipitate so all these kind of things to control the bleeding as well as uh, 
to uh, replace the hemoglobin uh, i mean to build up the hemoglobin so for these uh, purposes we need uh, blood products quite often i mean uh, all of us know that so however uh, don donors the way they come forward donors like you know with a huge difficulty for families also like you know as such we can't blame the families because they come from far off from different states or different cities different uh, district places and they, they come and stay here for a few months uh, for cancer treatment so during that time it is very difficult for them to mobilize the donors because they are near, near and dear and uh, friends and all will be in their own place so it is very difficult for them to mobilize the donors uh, on their own so it is very important to have voluntary donor pool so there are certain uh, donor pool like which was active a, a while ago before covid red dot programs and a few uh, program uh, organizations in hyderabad they were active in like you know mobilizing the voluntary donors however uh, now like uh, post covid like those voluntary donors of numbers also have come down and it was a huge crisis during uh, covid period uh, to get the blood donations for thalassemia children or sickle cell children, kids uh, or uh, for cancer patients it was a huge difficulty to mobilize the donors and get donations we had to do uh, programs through media to mobilize the donors actually uh, many of us we did that so that you know we get the voluntary donors and some of our uh, staff they went to even gated communities to get some blood donations to organize the camps within the gated communities so that you know we can compensate with these um, requirements for these patients so it is uh, but the scenario is improving quite a lot compared to what it was earlier not only blood donors even uh, bone marrow uh, donors also like you know for stem cell transplantations are coming voluntarily forward nowadays compared to earlier which is a huge uh, leap like compared to what it was earlier uh, so scenario is definitely improving i should say thank you ma'am thank you for the information and uh, yeah i you know you the way you've mentioned that it was a tough time struggling and getting people and doing the drives but hopefully the scenario should improve and more and more people should come forward to voluntarily donate blood over to dr ashish i think he is having some network issues oh yeah sir is back yeah i am here actually i am really delighted that i got out for a minute and you know for what reason to offer a vaccination to somebody so uh, two things on the quick note as we are speaking it out um the thing is um how important is blood donation you know i take one of the very important sessions everywhere is stress management for especially for the doctors and everybody else one of the best way to manage stress is by you know uh, uh, social service that's what i get involved with lions club and there cannot be a better uh, insight and comfort when you give your own blood uh, that's what we have heard from gurpal singh ji who has donated 143 times when you give blood from one packet of blood or one attempt you are actually giving lives to three people because that's what it can be used for three different uh, patients number one so do come forward and give blood and if you happen to be an rh negative in the words of dr kumar reddy sir it can actually help 100 people plus because they make the the serum which will be used for the anti uh, you know uh, rh negative mothers during the pregnancy time so donating blood is very very important and besides that part coming to the most important part which ashita was talking about sickle cell disease one of the most important thing we need to address sickle cell patients is with the vaccinations pneumococcal vaccination is very much in the need covid we have hyped about it and i wouldn't want to say anything against vaccination is is kind of yes to be considered uh, we need to understand what is more important you and me have our throat which is full of commensals which we call it as streptococcus pneumoniae so when we have this commensals when they enter our body and they become the 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 pneumococcal invasive pneumococcal disease that becomes a big you know life taking issues uh, 
So pneumococcal vaccination is very important. Besides pneumococcal vaccination, uh, swine flu or flu shots are very important every year to be taken. And besides these two things, the two cancer preventing vaccinations are very, very much important. Hepatitis B vaccination and HPV vaccination. So through this platform, I would want number one, all the girls less than 26 years old or anybody to assure that they are HPV vaccinated as well as hepatitis B vaccinated. Vaccinations save lives that's been proven beyond the point of any doubt. Our Bible is nothing but uh, uh, Harrison, which we all follow. And Harrison says only two things. The two ways to decrease the morbidity and mortality in any society is providence of clean water. Yes, that will keep you away from hepatitis B and other infections, the typhoid infections. Providence of clean water and second thing is vaccination. So yes, don't wait. Vaccinate is what my uh, suggestion to everybody will be. After this, we from Lions Club of Hyderabad, they like doctors and other uh, organizations together. HPS Foundation, we will have join hands to vaccinate people, orphans, as well as to support Dr. Ashita Singh mm -hmm. in, in Maharashtra in whatever way we can. We thank Dr. Vijay Karan Reddy, who has helped out in vaccinating almost uh, two dozen of uh, girls, orphan girls with HPV vaccination. Vaccinations are important. And last but not the least, three eyes are important to fight any pandemic, to keep our society healthy. Number one eye is information. That's why we have the busiest people to still leave their opinion and sit around here. We must pass the information. I would request Garima ma'am once the whole recording is over to share it with everybody. Information has to read the right kind of people. Investigations have to be done whenever we have a doubt. In, uh, uh, insurance has to be considered for everybody. You cannot fight medicine without having the inf you know, investigations and the uh, insurance in the present day world. In India, we provide the cheapest treatment in the world. My dear friends, the non-medical people, please understand. Any doctor who treats in Hyderabad, in India, in Telangana, in, in Maharashtra, they are giving you the most cost-effective treatment in the world. And the only thing is even the cost-effective treatment needs the money which is needed. So come forward, join with our you know, organization and save life by just giving one vaccination. Flu shots cost around 1,000 to 1,500. Prevnar is around 4,000. These all, when do you need to consider? On your own birthday. On the wedding anniversary, you have it. Come forward, save one life. That's what my call to everybody will be. Raktadan Mahadan. That's what the word which I would want There to is think. a question that how frequently should we donate blood from the audience? Oh, that's a fantastic question uh, posed here. How frequently can we donate? I wish Gurpal Singh Ji was here. If he is here, I'll be very happy for him to answer. He has been donating blood from the, a, from the 78, 1978. Every three months he donates blood and he has donated almost 143 times. So there is just no limit. Once the three months is over, you can donate your blood. Please come forward. Uh, we need you. I'm so happy that we have almost uh, 23 panelists today out here who are joining us. And we will be very happy to spread this message more and more people. So every three months, you can donate blood. If uh, uh, anything, anybody has a doubt, feel free to reach out to me at 810-612-7475 or our Red Cross Society in Hyderabad. We'll be very happy to help you out with any query to address that. Um, anything else from anybody uh, to be shared? I would be very happy. I was delighted by what Dr. Vijay Sarat shared. That there is lots of lies in the shoulders of uh, people. And, uh, uh, and especially, yes, uh, am I passing the buck to the bureaucrats? Probably, yes. I can tickle my senior from the medical background as well as a senior who is a very, very, you know, a, a, a khazana of information. Uh, Dr. Vijay, sir, how liberals like us should take these things to the, to the government and how do we uh, reach out to, so that the policymakers understand it? In India, we do not have a dengue vaccine, the dengue vaccine. We don't have the malaria vaccine, which is available anywhere else outside. We do not have a Zostavax, the, the, the vaccination to prevent shingles, which is very much needed. 
but how do we reach out to the government i think you can throw some light over it okay 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 uh see coming to sickle cell disease uh this uh, is a new terminology to me because when i was in my medical school way back in 73 to 77 uh it was known as sickle cell anemia even harrison used to mention only about sickle cell anemia not sickle cell disease anyway uh, we have moved much faster than that uh if you if you study there was one panelist who was referring about it i don't remember the name if you study the epidemiological evolution about sickle cell uh, disease over last 40 50 years it uh, is and it had to be you know increasing in terms of prevalence as well as incidence uh, on the sole ground that it is an inherited uh, ailment and not acquired ailment uh that is why it is generally restricted to a narrow band uh, o- over the globe st- starting from sub saharan africa till the northeastern part of india including middle east in between my basic concern is have we done enough study to convince the society in general and the state in particular state i mean the national government in particular that stem cell or bone marrow transplant which happens to be the only the only you know curative aspect as far as sickle cell disease is concerned have we done enough groundwork to convince them to take up that as a national campaign or maybe make it as part of the national health mission or something like that you know so that because we know that there is no other treatment or cure for sickle cell disease except the repeated transfusions maybe to prevent secondary infections whether pneumococcal or something else uh, maybe fungal infections secondary fungal infections maybe in the pipeline because of repeated uh, transfusion uh, things and uh, how long we will you know we will be using the uh, corticosteroids or you know antihistaminics to prevent those uh, problems arising out of repeated blood transfusion etc so maybe we'll have to think a little more deeper on these aspects and then take up the issues with the state uh, for for maybe a long term solution of this uh, problem which is going to be eternal unless we tackle it to you know sort of start uh, eradicating it thank you thanks a lot dr vijay sir i think that is a very good insight into what is possible from our end um what are the benefits of blood donation if i have to come to that point i would want everybody to understand that number one you get a free testing done for a lot of stuff your blood sh- uh, 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 group is known then and there how much of your hemoglobin is there that has been communicated to you and definitely a lot of times we find a uh, hidden diseases like hiv hepatitis b and hcv i encourage all of you especially a lot of people say sir we are poor and 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 we do not know how do we you and me have to encourage our im our you know rickshaw wala and everybody else to donate blood so that you can get a free you know investigations done number one number two is uh, these uh, the, there is a lot of secrecy they maintain they will not reveal the the hiv hepatitis b or hepatitis c positive status to anybody so if you are found out you don't have to be scared that the blood uh, the, the blood bank people they very much call you bring you out and then inform it to your friend so if you have any of your friends who you think has got hiv hepatitis b and wouldn't re- reveal it i think one of the best way to find it out is just take him for the you know, for the blood donation that will be easy way to reveal it out that second point apparently 
uh, a blood donation helps out in reducing the the uh, heart attacks also there have been few studies done because it takes away the iron it apparently helps out not to cause any kind of it's kind of cancer protective and to some extent few people say that it's even uh, helps out in fighting the mental illness i think the person who wrote the article was very much uh, on the positive note to talk a lot of good things about blood donation but overall we definitely believe that yes uh, blood donation save lives and whenever you save life you know that you have touched somebody's life and you are uh, physically better and mentally better so um, that was a good thing to understand that i think there is a question from pain uh, prem banabas best method for extended red cell antigen test to maintain red cell antigen profile for sickle cell disease would anyone want to take this prem you will have to be clarify is this a question ashita would you want to comment about it best method for extended red cell antigen test to maintain red cell antigen profile for sickle cell disease um, i'm slightly not clear about what you're asking uh, would uh, shirisha or anybody would want to address this if you want believe if it is the right thing to address otherwise if you can rephrase the question probably we'll be very happy to address that so uh, basically with the repeated transfusions you get the allo immunization Uh, and uh, not only for your uh, major antigens like a b or r h you also can develop antibodies against your minor group antigens so we need to have a profile of minor group in up front if we have that in hand so minor group uh, pattern of that and any antibodies present already uh, for that minor group for that individual so if you have extended red cell um, profile in the beginning it is easy to cross match in the future for these sickle cell children so when they develop allo immunization allo antibodies then you can choose the blood uh, you can cross match even for minor group antigens and then give appropriate blood so that the increment of the hemoglobin will be appropriate so just to simplify uh, to uh, for, to avoid cross match problems in the future you should have a extended antigen profile minor group antigen profile of your sickle cell children up front itself uh thanks dr shirisha for that input from your side um any question from anybody else Uh, so it is the same question i think the person was uh, he left the room for a while so he is asked the same question how frequently we can donate the blood when you were answering he was not around i think a uh, 3 months you must donate blood every 3 months um you get to know your hemoglobin if it is less than 10 nobody takes the blood so one of the good way to get an average investigation for yourself is go and donate blood you will get to know what is your hemoglobin they will definitely check your blood pressure they will check your blood grouping and and it's very healthy it keeps your bone marrow uh, in in size it keeps working on you so everybody from 18 till 65 years of age there are do's and don'ts if you have hiv hepatitis b hepatitis c or if you have active infection if right now you are feeling uneasy halka sa bukhar hai you have sore throat please don't give blood do not fool the pay, the relatives of the, the blood bank if you have any symptoms you are not feeling well you can have a viral prodrome so please don't give blood you can give blood if you are uh, healthy you are the age between 18 to 65 and uh, uh, that's it uh, definitely dr sudha has told if you are on insulin we will not take the blood usually we avoid taking blood from diabetes or hypertensive so those are the other tri- uh, criteria which we look into it though there can be some relative contraindications but any healthy person should donate blood once in 3 months so in a year around four times you can donate blood that's what everybody has to know that and for frequent donors we always suggest them to go ahead and take hematinics in between so that they can maintain their hemoglobin well yes so yes we all require the the hematrix to be given to anybody for that matter if your anemic hemoglobin less than 10 once the hemoglobin has crossed 10 uh, above 10 you need to take the iron 
for six months so that your liver stores are fulfilled. So that's another thing to be understood. And um, vaccinations for sickle cell anemia is very important besides the right time of admission, besides the proper, you know, uh, uh, hydration because they get dehydrated and that causes an issue. So looking forward, all of you to pour in with your help as well as to spread the information about sickle cell disease as we have the coming 18th of June is the World Sickle Cell Disease Day. And information is very, very important. A uh, lot of people uh, ask Ashish, you are almost every day on the, on the information page. Why do you do that? I said, I am very happy even if one life is touched and it is saved. Lot of people, especially in our uh, rural India, unko thyroid ki tablet chalti hai, but if they stop it and, and they'll say, Ki, sir, humko kuch bhi nahi hua hai. I would want to leave one example. Uh, uh, a young woman of 26 admitted under me. Uh, she had a CRVHD, the valvular heart disease, and she was admitted with power five, uh, zero by five because she had thrown an embolus to the brain and she was a thyroid patient and had not taken her treatment. So our PHC may be the free tablet which you get it. That needs to be reminded to our patients and the, through these very much platforms that information is important to be given to everybody possible so that we have a healthy society. Information, investigation, insurance. These are the three I's. And most important I is my involvement. Every individual, only a responsible citizen can bring about a blessed and healthy, you know, uh, uh, India. I, I thank everybody who have joined it today. I would pass the, the mic to Dr. Garima for a vote of thanks to everybody, unless until anybody has uh, any question over this. This session is being recorded and will be available uh, for you to share it with everybody else. Any question from Dr. Uh, uh, Reginald or Dr. Safia, anybody want to put anything input? We would leave the platform open for everybody to come in before we request Dr. Garima to close the session. I thank you all for your patience and your time today. Uh, it's, it's actually a commitment from all of you, Dr. Sharisha, Dr. Vijay Kumar, Dr. Reginald, Dr. Ashish, Dr. Ashima, Dr. Ashita, and Dr. Sudha for taking your time out from your busy OPDs and uh, you know talking about this. This is a, a, a self-rewarding service which you've done today. Uh, we don't have any certificates, we don't have anything for you, but we just have a thank you from bottom of our heart to be here and to just spread awareness. And I am myself is very motivated today to <laughs> give blood and definitely this week I'm going to go for sure. Thank you so much. Garima, are we having a picture taken? Can we request everybody to please put on your video? So, yeah. Do you think you can do idea. that? Ajit Nair Saab is one of the very dedicated senior person from Lions. I'm very happy to have Anil Singham Saab to join us. And Chetna Bhatia ma'am and Madan Mohan sir and Prem Barnabas. And Selina as usual. She's a very dynamic lady, a doctor who is my student who keeps joining and especially big thanks to Ashita for having, you know, given us, shown us a way that we need to do something for the blood disorders with respect to our, uh, you know, uh, sickle cell disease and the uh, blood disorder donors day. Can you click the pic? We request Madan Mohan yes, sir also, sir. if possible, to put on the video and other friends also to put on the video. Yeah. Uh, Thank on you, the Dr. count Dr. of three. Yeah, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, and uh, thank you all, uh, Dr. Ashish, and organizing this, and is very informative to us. And Dr. Vijay Kumar Sarji, it's very, very uh, informative message he has given, which is uh, incentivized to the people who can give the blood. So that is very, very important, and we request him to uh, put a proposal to the even NGOs, government organizations, how we'll go proceed about this. So the people will come forward to donate the blood, at least for seeing some incentives, what he has advised. So thank you very much, sir, for a very important message you have given to us today. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. On the count of three, I'll click. One, two, three. Smile. Yes, done. Thank you.
Thanks a lot. Take care. Goodbye. We'll see you again on another topic when we come up to take care of another awareness day as it comes forward.